And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. And tomorrow we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So Aaron go broad for all the Irish in me. There ain't very much. <laughs> It'll be a wonderful day. And we're almost to springtime. Next week, March 19th, spring officially begins. The days are getting longer, brighter, warmer, sunnier. God is good. Life is great. And while we're at it, let me just ask all of you to take one minute, just a second, to like, share, subscribe, and comment. We're really starting to push that a little bit because we want to grow our audience. We want more people to be able to enjoy what you do every Saturday morning. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube especially, I guess X has it as well, you can like it. You can share it with your friends. That's really the big one for us. Just hit the share button and send it to whatever groups you're a part of or friends that you may have that you think will like this. And if you haven't done so, subscribe. And finally, make a comment. I'll try my very best to respond to each one individually. But if I can't, at least other people will be able to be in on the discussion. And that is a good thing. And this week, Super Tuesday 2 occurred. And as a result, and as predicted here, both Joe Biden and Donald Trump have now officially, mathematically clinched their party's nominations. Now, I continue to believe that Joe Biden will not ultimately be the Democrat nominee, and you can check me out months from now and tell me how wrong I was, and I'll take it. But if he is, it really increasingly looks to me like this could actually be a very wide margin election. You know, last week we heard all this hullabaloo about the State of the Union speech from the Democrat side and how great he was, how much energy he showed. We all knew it was a little bit different, but the American people didn't see it that way. Biden's popularity continued to plummet. It is at the lowest point imaginable right now, down in the mid-30s. Nobody is going to get reelected with those kinds of numbers because ultimately a reelection campaign is a, re is a report card on the incumbent, and Joe Biden is failing miserably. Donald Trump, meanwhile, continues to pick up pockets of support that Republicans don't traditionally get, particularly in the minority communities, the Latino community most especially, but the African-American males as well. He is really, really ticking up every single day among those vital constituencies for the Democrats. And in battleground state after battleground state, he's leading. You know, the national polls don't take into account the fact that you've got New York, California, Illinois clomped in there with huge pluralities for whomever the Democrat candidate might be. But in the state-by-state -state polls, in the ones that really matter, Donald Trump's doing very, very well. So I'm looking very, very bullish at Trump's chances right now. And in another piece of bad news for the Biden campaign, Robert Hur testified before Congress this week in a marathon session about his report on Joe Biden and the papers that he took with him. Now, the Democrats thought they had their moment. Bluntly, so did a lot of Republicans, because there are a lot of Republicans that are not happy with her for not indicting or not asking for an indictment of Joe Biden. But in my judgment, what he did was much more politically damaging to Joe Biden than an indictment would actually have been. He said, basically, the guy doesn't have his mental capacity or facility, something most of us already knew, but he put it out there in black and white. What was interesting about those hearings, though, was that Jerry Nadler, in one of those moments that lawyers should never have, he asked a question he didn't know the answer to. And he said, so you basically found no times when Donald or when uh, Joe Biden lied to. Is that correct? I said, well, not exactly. He phrased it in very diplomatic parlance, but what he basically said was, yeah, he lied to us. And on another occasion, they said, well, you exonerated uh, President Biden, didn't you? He said, no, we didn't. They came back, you exon no, we didn't. He was very, very, very clear about that. What he said was that they didn't think that a jury would find him guilty because of his diminished mental capacity and facilities. That is indictment enough. And back here in my home state of beautiful Pennsylvania, Governor Josh Shapiro is proposing a new tax on energy production. Now think about that. Basic economics tells us that if you tax something, you get less of it. And Pennsylvania is one of the nation's leaders in the production of electricity, natural gas, and coal. Three pretty important staples to the grid that we all rely upon. And Josh Shapiro wants to tax them. The implications 
of that are really, really frightening. This is one of the reasons why Josh Shapiro, in my judgment, won't ever make it, despite his incredible ambition onto a national ticket. His pandering to the left is ultimately going to be seen as not much more than that, where America is really looking for leadership, something we all want to see. And for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.